Welcome back to another edition of the Sunday Scaries presented by Godwood Media. It's your favorite host, favorite host, the champion of the people. I can't say the people's champion. I think someone already owns that. I can't quite recall, though. I'm joined, as always, by the doctor himself. What's popping? Hey, man, a lot's popping all over the sports world. Is LeBron's ankle popping? Uh, I know mine is. <laughs> you see that video today? Mm -mm. He fell down. Camera's on him. And he goes, I heard a pop. And he's grabbing his leg. And then he got up and ran down the floor. So I, too, have sprained my ankle. I just want. And I, you know what? I'm here today. Popping and flopping. I cut my finger three weeks ago. And I'm, I fought through all adversity. And I'm still recording the pot. I'm very proud of you. Never a day off. Uh, today, we're going to do... XFL week two wrap up. Got a lot of thoughts there. Very angry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk a little basketball as we've promised. Um, we're both going to pick who we think will be in the finals. And then we'll wrap up with uh, new baseball rules and how great they're going to be for everybody involved. And uh, we might do a little free form afterwards. Seems reasonable. Good plan. Let's get after it. Thursday night football. But not even the bad, good kind. Just the bad, sad kind. <laughs> yeah. Good way to describe it. Bad and sad. St. Louis Battlehawks. Um, played the Seattle Dragons. And they played in Seattle. I don't know if anyone showed up. Looked like about 200 people in this. They said 2,000, I think, but it had to be more than that. I wouldn't even admit it to 2,000. <laughs> it was like the Vegas game where they're like, this stadium holds 9,000 people and we got a 7,000 strong crowd. Immediately pans to the crowd. And it was like six people. So it it's an interesting stadium to do an XFL game in because it looked barren it's you did bring up a good point that none of these people should be playing in nfl or even probably college stadiums because it is sad when you have lumen field that holds 60 plus thousand and we've been to that place when it's like out of control act um when when you see 12 people sitting in the front row and you're like oh shit at the very least, you might want to do it for optics sake, uh, just so it doesn't look like your uh, league is failing right out of the get-go. I mean, yeah, doing it at, uh, I think you said UW maybe, or... That'd I'm, be a cool stadium. That's a very nice stadium, too. I'm sure there's, like, a big high school. Oh, that would be kind of embarrassing. But, I mean, a big high school really? stadium in the area might be cool. More embarrassing know. than playing at a stadium that was built for rodeos? Yeah. I guess not that embarrassing. Good point. Good point. More embarrassing than getting paid a thousand bucks a week to play football. Hey, man. Love the sport. Fine. <laughs> Let's talk about... I, 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 Okay, so look, I made a mistake. I denounced the Vipers correctly, and I said I'm all in on the Dragons. I'm denouncing the Dragons. Damn. We're all out <laughs> on the Dragons. I can't. I can't. I won't abandon you guys. If you have one fan, it will be me. I disavow their coach. I think Jim Hazlitt has a fake headset on. I don't think that's hooked up to anything. Sleepy Jim? He has <laughs> no idea what's going on. He, I, look, I'm not saying I would call a better game, but at least call a game. The coaching decisions in the past couple of weeks for the Dragons have been very interesting, especially in the last three, uh, two to three minutes of the game. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're they're planning a lot for two minute drills at the end of games, uh, but both games so far have come down to that, and, and they have not executed well. So uh, something has to change a little bit for for these uh, coaching decisions being made. But here's what I know. A.J. McCarron is a giant crybaby. 
and I hate watching him play. He is so, so substandard. Now, to be fair, he was doing better than any other quarterback on the field. But when when Seattle gives away the game, now two weeks in a row, really, I, I don't know what to make of it. Did, do you think Danucci looked better this week than last week? Less errors on his part, I think. Um, however, I think he did have a fumble again. Uh, pretty critical fumble, if I remember correctly. Um, towards the end of the game. Uh, what this league is going to come down to, who is going to turn it over the least? We saw a lot of turnovers today in both of the games. Uh, we're seeing a lot of turnovers in general. Um, I don't think either – I don't think all eight of these teams – are good enough to turn it over three to four times a game and stay in it. You're you're gonna lose that. So there was that that sweet moment where Seattle um, lost complete control and they just went like back to back drives, handing the ball off to different running backs to fumble it. Yeah, right. That was cool too. I mean, let's get a little ball security going. Maybe I'll come back if they secure the ball. I will say, Danucci, no interceptions this week. So he uh, did the part of throwing the ball correctly. He is very, I feel like rattled, rattleable. Um, He's seeing a lot of demons out there. It's it's going to be easy with these offensive linemen to to pressure these quarterbacks. I think they're just not up to the standard of your typical professional lineman. Um, so if your defensive front is, is any sort of competent, you're, you're going to get there. Uh, I don't necessarily know if he's rattled to the point uh, of it's not going to be easy to turn it around, but um, I don't think they have a lot of confidence in their lines. Uh, and, and by they, I mean most of the quarterbacks in this league. So sure. we got to try to get that turned around. And I don't know, maybe it's a conditioning thing. Maybe it's just they simply are getting blown out. I, I don't know. I would know. also like to point out, as you pointed out first, Seattle had to play on Sunday last week and then travel back to Seattle on Monday and then play on Thursday. Yeah, a three-and-a-half-day um, turnaround is rough, and that's going to be the quickest turnaround for the season. Uh, they also have a Thursday game. They have the the other Thursday game down the road. Um, you know, I think we did mention it last week. It, it you're gonna get screwed, I guess, being the most far north uh, northwest team uh, in this league. So uh, that that's not fun for the players, I don't think. No, I doubt it. But I mean, here say something nice about the Battle Hawks. They also had to do that, which is pretty unfair to them. Yeah, right. Um, they did have a quick turnaround as well, uh, which may be why A.J. McCarron could not stop crying in this game. You, you just continuation. It was, it was a continuation from Sunday. Um, it, yeah, that's an interesting schedule choice. I'm assuming if this league continues to stay together down the road, scheduling is going to be a lot m better done uh, than it is. You can't do that. But, you cannot do that. That's yeah. Um, and then uh, – Only Thursday is played by Seattle. And I assume the next Thursday game is going to be in Seattle, too. It might be, yeah. Well, all right. So, shouts out to weird scheduling. We could fix that with an Excel sheet, I'm sure. Um, you said something good about the Battle Hawks. I'll say something nice about the Dragons. Um, quite honestly, probably the best receivers in the XFL with Josh Gordon and uh, Jacor Pearson. Um Jacor Pearson is leading the league right now in uh, yardage and receptions, I think. And uh, Josh Gore, I mean, he's proven that he's he's got what it you takes. Know what's, so. You know what's crazy, though, is so they only threw the ball to him twice. What are we doing? Yeah, you did mention during the game that they should just give, you know, Josh Gordon 10 touches a, a game, and that's probably a, a good strategy. Even but, if you needed to just do, like, some jet sweep bullshit, that guy should have the ball in his hands. He is big, fast, and strong. And he's like that NFL strong. He is old. So, so let's. 
I believe in him. I kind of do too. I mean, <laughs> he's very good. Yeah. He got a, a conversion, right? Yep. He got a three point conversion. Um, it was a beautiful uh, little shovel pass to him. Um, that was uh, the announcers kept saying, or the commentators kept saying it was uh, Mahomes esque, they said. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Shouts out to Ben Vinucci for being Mahomes S. Ben Mahomes. Ooh. Oh, don't, don't, don't let don't let Pat's real brother know. <laughs> I I do I, the Battle Hawks are nothing special. They are 2 0. So we're looking up at them. They're yeah. winning their games in the last, you know, six minutes uh, of of both of those games, and they're staying in with it. You know, you you mentioned that you you don't necessarily like AJ McCarron's play. Um, he's fine at the end of games, and I guess that's all you need if you're St. Louis. Uh, and to be fair, when when the teams that they're playing should be tightening the screws, getting a few extra points, they just don't do it. I think that's the league in and of itself is there's no no one has that killer instinct on turnover. We got to get these points on, uh, you know, punts three times in a row and you come away with no points. It's hard, hard to win when you do that. You give the other team an infinite number of chances to stay in the game. So. Well, it may be related to that point that you're making as well. Uh, when you don't have very competent kicking uh on your team which looks like most of these teams yeah uh it's incredibly important that your offense is is firing on all cylinders after a turnover so yeah you gotta find that end zone because some kickers are making 40 yarders some kickers are missing 30 yarders it's been it's been very interesting and the same kicker could make a 40 and then miss a 30 yeah especially yesterday's game yeah i don't know what to say about that yet (laughs) <laughs> um, so I guess long story short I'm out on Seattle they look like garbage they have I don't know what their issue well you know their issue is two minute drill and, they don't and, have... and the middle of the game they start off very hot middle of the game doesn't exist and then when we have a chance at the end nobody knows what's going on so also we love the editing or curse words. Yeah, the the rewinding <laughs> yeah, we're, we're up, is awesome, uh, especially when there's multiple. It's like a thirty <laughs> second straight rewind uh, sound clip. It's pretty funny. I wonder if they thought like we'll give them locker room access, and the coaches will be like, "Great job out there, boys! Have your fruit snacks and get ready for the second half." These are mad. I think there's been a couple coaches that I think you can tell uh, during those those halftime uh, camera moments. They know the camera's on them, so they're really trying hard to, to button it up. But um, I think the tape delay is very smart for them to, to employ if you're going to have microphones on literally every single person on the sideline. We had one of our high school football coaches get fired because the parents could hear him cursing out the kids at halftime through the tunnel (laughs) (laughs) so uh that's just football baby it's football you want to read this one you big dragons guy i'm gonna stay dragons till the day i die i'm not a fair weather fan like you. i've found my team now though oh god (laughs) till next week the st louis i guess you're gonna win battle hawks 20 and the seattle do we suck dragons at 18 I hate the Battle Hawks logo. Yeah, you're not a big sword with wings guy. I don't understand it. Well, they should have made like a war hawk. It, yeah, a, a, a bird of some a kind. A big hawk holding like a flail in his grips. Fix their logo. You got to call them. No, they don't respond to me on Twitter. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy to me. I'm like one of... And I'm not kidding. I could count the number of fans that show up to the game. Okay. I'm one of them. You should at least have the decency to pretend to interact with me. Sure. Uh, all right. Now we'll, we'll, we'll go on. Fast forward to Saturday. DC Defenders 
played the Vegas Vipers in Vegas in a rodeo arena in a monsoon. All fun stuff. And I couldn't have been happier with the results. <laughs> um, I'm ready to call it. Orlando is the worst team in the league. Yeah. Vegas right. is next. And I don't that's think fair. it's close. That's fair. And that's hard to say because I, before the season started, had them ranked quite high. And I also announced that um, Brett Hundley would win the XVP Oh, did you really? I did say that. <laughs> oh, God. All right. That's fun. <laughs> I don't even know if they're going to do one of those, but I am calling MVP of the XFL the XVP, and it was going to be his. Um, What a choice. What do you mean? It's a great pick. God. People should respect that. I don't think so. Now, let's, let's just think about he could get better. He's been on the team for two weeks. They kept saying that. He's been on the team for two weeks. And they also kept reiterating – that he wants to be one of the regular guys. He's, and I quote, NFL rich. But he wants to be one of the regulars. He even stayed in the same hotel and ate the same food. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know how rich they think he is, but if the team's paying for a hotel, he's going there. If that is going to be a narrative that's kind of thrown out there about Hunley, um, I think the team and maybe himself might want to kind of lock that in. <laughs> the fact that the commentators even had to point out that like, oh, he's even eating with the team. He's even stay like, yeah. come on. It, it, you all should be doing it. You're in the fucking XFL. You're, you know, yeah. there's no big superstar, you know, Joe Namath walk around with a fur coat type guys here. You're all kind of the same level. right? Now. Correct. Except for your favorite defender. Who's that? Vic Beasley. Vic Beasley. He's actually too good for this league. <laughs> well, they, they need to purposely section him off because he might murder you if you pop off. That's true. He should <laughs> he should get the nicest hotel room. That's yeah, by default. The penthouse suite. Beautiful. So that was a weird, I don't know why that was such a point of emphasis, but it was funny. So I immediately thought, did he have more money than I think he does? The answer was surprising. Kind of. He kind of had more money than I thought he did, but, you know, the internet is internetting me maybe, but so you work about $5 million, four to $5 million. Dude, if someone's paying for my hotel room, I got four or $5 million, I'm going to take that. Sure. I don't know what... It's not like he has, uh, like, residual sponsor deals just flowing in. He's not making money off of his NFL career anymore. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have a shoe. He doesn't have, you know, uh, a high-selling jersey. Maybe he, ah, I no. doubt he did when he was in the NFL. The last team that paid him was the Cardinals in 2019. Yeah, I don't see anybody walking around with a Hunley Cardinals jersey. No, and he was making, you know, 625000 a year plus signing bonuses and stuff. So the Cardinals ended up paying him like 1.1 1 .1 mil 2019. That money's probably hmm. gone. Maybe. Maybe not. I mean, if he's not doing anything, who cares? But, dude, just play with the team. And if he's the one that's – his – okay, so I will say this for him. His halftime interview was, like, goofy and cheesy. He's like, I just love playing football, man. I'm so happy I get to come out here and play. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how serious he is about this. That's the other thing I'm trying to figure out is, is he just – is he big goofing me, or is he this bad? Well, I think from from this game, at least for me, what I saw is that he should be the starter. Uh, I don't really for like sure, that Perez uh, guy. I don't really think he's got what it takes. Um, I think he should be starting uh, and given an, an honest chance. Um, you know, I, we only saw him really in this game. He didn't – I don't think he played at all the last game. No, I think the reason – I was confused. I thought he was on the team for longer, but I think he didn't play last week because he was not ready. Mm, okay. And so he spent last week and this week learning all the plays. Prepping. Hmm. And playbooks and stuff. But I think going forward, he should be the guy. And maybe he just, like, gets way better as he goes. But, I mean, he was – he, I think, is athletically too gifted. 
who kind of get tricked by this league. He should just do what Derek King does and out into and barbecue every play. Maybe. He's bigger than Derek King. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he. I think he has what it takes to be a quarterback in this league, uh, and he's probably got some of the most experience in the NFL besides maybe McCarron uh, as a quarterback. So Here's what I will say. Say something nice about Brett Hundley. He can snap that ball still. He, you like the way he throws. I yes, you mentioned I, he he's got an NFL arm. You can see it when he throws those um, little five yard out routes, and he throws the ball forty yards on those plays across the field. He's he's got an arm to make the throws, and he can he can rip it down the field. And maybe I'm looking too hard at this because the weather there was unbelievable. Yeah, that was a, a nasty one for for all nasty ones. Uh, pretty much right at halftime, as soon as the clock hit zero in the second quarter, uh, this rain started coming down, and the seven thousand person crowd dwindled down to about twenty. It was <laughs> not. You could have played. You could have made a circle and played duck, duck, goose with the remaining fans. Oh, Unbelievable. Man. So there was a wind issue. There was a rain issue, and no one seemed to have a problem with the rain. Except for kickers. A lot of slipping and sliding. That was kind of <laughs> funny to watch. You don't really get to see kickers uh, fall on their ass multiple times in a, in a game. What was your favorite missed kick? Was it the guy kicking off? It was the kickoff. <laughs> that, that, that was the first one, and that really let me know that, oh, gosh. Would he kick that ball? And I was like, one, where did it go? And – then the replay showed you, like, dude, that almost killed the ref. Oh, dude. <laughs> the red hat ref almost got just obliterated. I feel like that thing barely went over him. He had no idea it was coming. Yeah, yeah. And I think also the, the refs were just like, oh, shoot, what do we call now? Because that definitely didn't go as far as we needed it to. Uh, I don't think they were prepared for for making that kind of call, too. So I, I, I think he shouldn't have tried to kick it. I think he should have just slipped and been like, doesn't I, count. I can't kick it. Doesn't count. Yeah, like purposely miss it. That might have been a good call. But he he fully committed to kick it. And he was already like parallel to the ground. And he just threw his leg through. But I like that one a lot. I also like the guy missing like a 20-yard field goal. Yeah, that was a gnarly slip. Um, I, I just, I haven't seen that. And I know we're we're talking about a different league than the NFL. But I haven't seen that in a super rainy NFL game. And if I'm being honest, I don't think I've seen it in a super rainy college football game. No. Um, and I don't really know what was going on. It, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, shout out to Tom. He made a mention, our, our buddy Tom, about, you know, oh, gosh, the conditions of the field are going to be really bad in this league So in some places. Um, that's got to have something to do with it, maybe. I, I agree with that assessment that the grass – probably was helping nobody but I mean you gotta build a plan and I think if you are leaning too far back you might just slip it out yeah I I don't know what was going on it was good it was good entertainment oh I and never, that's this league right <laughs> I never laughed harder at a kickoff attempt in my life the EFL entertainment football league but um yeah I, I that was just good good comic relief in a game that was kind of boring because of how bad everybody was playing. If you if you had to kick a 20-yard field goal, mm -hmm. how much technique would you use versus knowing that you could just toe punch this just thing? Just hammer it? Yes. Um, I would use no technique. I would just toe punch this thing as hard as I could. Yeah. Bet I don't slip. If that's my job, you probably don't have to hyper-focus on a 20-yard field goal. But – Again, I mean, kickers are athletes too, right? We don't know how hard it is to be a kicker. So, well, XFL is not helping the brand, that's for <laughs> sure. It's making everybody laugh but <clears throat> for all the wrong reasons. So, that was our Vipers discussion. We'll do a little Defenders talk now, okay? Here's, here's what I know. And you know who you are. <laughs> you know exactly who you are. Jordan Ta'amu is a horrible quarterback. My guy cannot throw a football. No. 
very inaccurate, um, not getting enough on it or putting too much on it. He seems a little unprepared for for the rush that's coming to him every time he gets a little bit of pressure. Uh, I I haven't been impressed and, and our I not even have mobile. Yeah, which is surprising compared to, um, I mean, okay, compared to. Garrett King, he's not as mobile. He's more mobile than probably 95% of the other quarterbacks in the league. But he cannot throw. Well, I you know, we mentioned it before. It seems like they have two of a two very similar quarterbacks that they can kind of interchange. Uh two weeks in a row, Derek King has kind of come in. Uh, at the end of the second quarter and at the end of the fourth to kind of switch things up, give people different looks uh, and, and be that mainly running quarterback. What you might want to do, and, and this is going to be very unorthodox, and, and it, but it would be fun for us, I think, to watch. You might just want to go, hey, let's go option left, option right, wildcat quarterback extravaganza. Are we suggesting... The Navy triple option. I think so. I Yeah, a very military football style uh, uh, play calling, uh, playing to the strengths of both of your quarterbacks. Um, I think it would just be fun to see that in a professional league. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I've not been very impressed with Tahamu this year. The defenders can really run the ball, though. That is their core strength. And... Amu was on no drives with a touchdown. I don't know. What, what do you do? He he slows the game down, and he makes it so choppy. The ball is moving a third of the time. There's sacks. There's a million incompletions. But when, when Derek King plays, he actually doesn't throw the ball. He did not throw one pass the entire game, but he moved the ball down the field being like, am I running it, or is the guy behind me running it? You'll never know. And if you guess wrong, <clears throat> you know, 10, 20 yard run every time. And maybe this is an indictment on the Vipers defense. Maybe this is an indictment on the front five, front seven. But they were just for free running the ball. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 229 yards, five and a half average uh, yardage. That's beautiful. That's good numbers. Uh, that's what you want to see. I mean, that's, that's remarkably good, especially yeah. if you consider like a running clock scenario. Very good. I just don't understand how they're winning. This game, I do understand how they won, just so we're clear. They were clearly the better team with a better offense. But... Uh, Amu, not that good of a quarterback. I I can agree with that. I'll live and die by that. Their running back, super good. They have a bunch of them. They had three guys carry the ball ten or more times. Good. Regardless of how good or not good uh, these guys are, I cannot have them finish in the top four. <laughs> I don't know how they're not going to. To be honest, my integrity is at stake if that happens. We're gonna have to do a hand up thing. I'm not gonna admit defeat here. I'm gonna say it was well, no, rigged from the start. We got a lot of time left. Okay, we got a lot of time left. We don't have to do hand up till like maybe we gate. Okay, all right, good. So defenders still suck. Vipers actually suck. Yeah. The DC end zone defenders, eighteen. And the Vegas round them up vipers six. They're just eating their own tails. Yeah. Uh, Vegas ass eaters. <laughs> wow, that's that's sometimes a good thing in this day and age. Some people really like that sort of thing. Snake just eats his own ass. It's like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I like that. You know he's got that weird snake tongue, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Are you. Can you imagine a snake 
<laughs> I'm just gonna be hard to explain. A snake it puts his tongue out through his butthole and it comes back out his mouth. I know I can't imagine. I've never thought about that. Until I, just mean, I just I just imagined it. <laughs> Gross. Get your mind out of the gutter. That's, that's some football that's, talk. That's about. funny. <laughs> that's a football guy thing. I don't think so. I don't think that's even close to football. The Vipers tongue punch in their fart box is so hard that it comes back out their mouth. Oh, you talked right. about the endless loop. I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I got firsthand embarrassment. I was nowhere near as bad as you suggesting the XFL be the sexy men's football league. That's There's going to be a men's lingerie night on the XFL, mark my words. You heard it here first, last, and otherwise. I mean, why not? We went to the hmm, went to the Portland Gay Night. Portland Gay Night? <laughs> the Trailblazers game was Pride Pride game or something. Was it really? Yes. Oh, okay. My bad. What do you, you don't remember the halftime show? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. That was a different time in the Sandy Glorious age, man. I don't remember <laughs> half the shit we used to do. All right. <laughs> That was a rough time for me. Tyler was very happy he got his free McDonald's because they scored 110 points or something. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> he downloaded the app immediately. Oh, that's good. I don't know if he ever claimed it. We got to retroactively claim it. Let's talk about the uh, San Antonio Dwayne The Rock Johnsons and the Dwayne. worst team in the XFL. Yeah. This is going to be hard because we're going to have to say something nice about the Guardians. I I might not. You might have to handle that one. All right. Let's start there. Let's just try to say something nice about the Guardians. Um, Paxton Lynch got benched and then got to come back. So they he's got a lot of heart. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Spin zone. Uh, Paxton Lynch didn't throw an interception. Say something nice. Good. But he had like nine fumbles. That's all. No, I have. no fumbles. Nice. So this is this is alarming. I'm just gonna look at this from a top down view real quick. Um, the Guardians had only gave the ball, only had what one turnover. They only turned the ball over one time the entire game, and they scored twelve points and gave up thirty. I mean, that offense is abysmal. That first quarter was good football from them. Um, they they seemed to believe in themselves and want to be in it. Um, uh, you know, it was 6-6 six, six at the end of the first quarter. Um, I, I just didn't notice enough to be like, oh, wow, this is the worst team in that first quarter. But from that point forward, uh, the Brahmas took over, which in their own right, they're, they're not that good either. Uh, which is a red flag if you're the Guardian. You've said that you think Heinz Ward might be the worst coach uh, yes. in this league. Um, and, and, you know, how today ended, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. But, um, you know, regardless, they I, – I just don't know what happened. Um, the Orlando uh, – the Guardians just kind of gave up. Yes, they didn't I don't care know. anymore. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> they can't throw the ball. Correct. Paxton Lynch got to play again because DeAndre Francois – um, completed six passes for eight yards. That's an insane. That, that's crazy. With a touchdown too, <laughs> and an interception. That's so bad. He did every part of football within eight yards, and his wow. longest pass was four. So he completed five passes for four yards. That's bad. That's so bad. That's wild. Okay. Maybe they should just run the ball because uh John Main Martin averaging five yards a carry maybe just do that that guy seems good great name hall of fame name maybe yes we could put him in the in the raffle yeah John Main like that <laughs> John Main baby I don't know what else to make of this team they're not fun to watch they are look I took my shoes off you want to smell them? No. What? The, what are you on right now? <laughs> You're crazy. I'm on. Bro. Wait. 
Where's the camera? Right there. <laughs> I know. I'm in our demon time. Took that weird afternoon nap. Oh, yeah. You're going to be up forever. Um, what I will say, though, um, throughout the entire game, when they were doing player interviews for Orlando, uh, a lot of really humble guys that play for this team, uh, a lot of team-oriented uh, fellas out there, um, just talking about how, you know, execute, play with each other, respect each other, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's good to see, but it's usually only good to see when your team's playing really well. I'm disrespecting all of them. I like that. Maybe that's what they need. They need a little more uh, animosity, a little more hustle up, a little more swagger. They need to be nasty. Mm. They need to be aggressive. <clears throat> we don't need we don't need pats on the backs and firm handshakes for sucking. Sure. Okay. Someone should kick dirt in their eyes. Maybe they're just happy to be here, man. Just here so I don't get fined. Now we can talk about a team that might be good, might be bad. But they're probably a 4-5 finisher, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know. I still don't know who their quarterback is. Jack Cohen. Um, put up great numbers this game. Very efficient. Um, he is. That's a, that's a nice game. And uh, three tutties as well, 165 yards, which isn't, you know, a stellar amount of yardage, but hey, um, well, 16 for 24 is great numbers. Consider how short their fields were probably a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Sure. Probably only had to go 50, 60 yards per drive. Who knows? Because they didn't have hardly any rush yards either. But to go, to, to pass at at like a 67 uh Completion percentage is great. Yeah. Seven yards of a pass. That's very good. This looks like the most NFL stat line I've seen. It, it was a very efficient game, quarterback-wise. Um, and I think he fed a lot of receivers, too. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people ate, and um, that's good. That is good. They might need to figure out how to run the ball. He was their leading rusher as well on three carries. <laughs> well, Kalen Balaj is, you know, a, a very NFL um, uh, experienced running back. I want to see more out of him for sure. Um, one of Honestly, it, it was a player that I really like to see play in the NFL. Granted, he was um, usually a second string guy, but um, I think he can bring a lot to the table. Uh, last week, he got a, a bit more touches. I think he got like 19 touches, 20 touches last week for like 50 some yards so i think he has the potential to to really get fed that's i guess all you're looking for then i don't <clears throat> this game felt like it was dragging and nothing was happening it wasn't very fun to see past the first quarter i don't think just because the brahmas ran away with it but um shouts out to the over uh you you love to see it if there's going to be one over uh, a weekend then hey that's fun uh, I, I, this, these are two teams that one is really bad and one you don't care about yet. But I'm not done. I, you know, I'm actually not done on my theory that the Rock is going to make sure the Brahmas are competitive all year, and maybe they win the title. So I did learn today. I should have known this probably last week. But the top two teams from each division will play, and then the winners of those will play for the championship. Which is, I think, a great way to do it. So 12 weeks, 12 weeks of XFL. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nice. And the Dragons are only two games behind first. <laughs> well, isn't every team kind of two there's, games behind? There's some one-on-one -on -one teams. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, Like the Brahmas. Beautiful. Uh, say something nice about the Brahmas. We didn't do that yet. So let's say something nice about them. Uh, well, I mean, we talked about the quarterback play. We talked about people getting fed. That's kind of nice. I like their logo. Uh, the helmets were kind of cool. They had the horns on the back of the helmets. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of cool. That's a little... good design because yeah. the roughnecks need help. Um, say something nice about the Brahmas. I think the black and yellow uh, 
really works. And I think uh, it is a cool contrast. Heinz Ward being on a team that's black and yellow is, is just, it's too perfect. Like you said, Rock might be uh, fixing a little bit of things. Yeah. And Heinz Ward got his first ever professional football coaching win. Shouts out. I also think that we should stop calling this professional football. They're using that word very loosely. Well, I think a commentator uh, that I heard today said that uh, the fan-controlled football league was also professional football. Oh, so, so we were commissioners. Yes. <laughs> Get us on your payroll, XFL. Firm handshakes. We were commissioners then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you want to read this one? Sure. Okay. Um, as I said, the San Antonio Dwayne LaRock Johnson's 30 and the Orlando guarding a 0-10 season <laughs> Guardians with uh, 12 high stakes points. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right. The two Texas teams. I'm assuming Arlington's in Texas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could have been Arkansas. Texas. Okay. So we have the Renegades and the Roughnecks. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Was this the game of the weekend in the XFL? Or do you think Seattle and the Battle Hawks was better? I'm really disappointed in the Dragons, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to give them too much credit right now. I think this was a fun one to watch. Um, uh, I think it was... There was a little back and forth, and there was opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, Arlington leading at the half, 14-11, uh, really kind of showed that, hey, they might be able to stay in this and, and, and get a dub. They, and they uh, fought back real hard. Yeah, they, they, they had a lot of things going for them up till um, halftime. And, and seemed to be really interested in staying in it. Um, but that Wade Phillips coach uh, Houston team is is just, I, I think they're going to be the team to beat. I think they're going to be a number one spot. I agree with you that if you have to, if you have to make decisions in critical moments, he will always make the right one, especially in this league. Uh <clears throat> With that being said, I'm now officially a, a Roughnecks supporter. Oh, God. <laughs> I have joined your ranks. Thank you for welcoming me. And shouts out to Wade Phillips. Always been my guy. Drop a comment if you think Cody's a Fairweather fan. I can't be Fairweather. They have no fans. Speaking of fans, though, uh, this game was noticeably the loudest. It was. Um, Wherever they're playing was good. Yeah, Texas uh, rivalries, I think, are just going to be fun. Texas has always been a football state uh, all the way down to the high school level. Um, so I think it's it's fun to see the fans really getting into it. Uh, the crowd looked uh, the most fleshed out. Uh, it was a beautiful night, too. It was like, I think uh, they said it was about 60 degrees. A little windy. And, um, you know, people were out there in T-shirts and shorts. Yeah. Um, so it was a good night for football. They were playing Texas football. And... They probably have the best fan base. Yeah. Maybe the Battle Hawks, because I know they had a very good showing week one when they were at home. But I would venture to say the Roughnecks probably have one of the best fan bases. Um, but they haven't played on the road yet, and they're playing at home again next week. So maybe, maybe it'd be interesting to see if they travel somewhere, if some more people come out of the, the woodworks, or maybe... Some of Texas goes with them. Yeah. Um, interesting jerseys. I always like to to kind of pay attention to the jerseys that are in the stands. Uh, we had a couple of uh, Bobby Boucher jerseys. We did see those. Uh, those are fun. Um, <laughs> that's that's always fun to, to see those. Um, yeah, I, I think Houston's just, they're so well put together. They're probably the best coached in the XFL. Um, and it obviously showed because they finished this game. It was down at halftime, and, and they put enough together in the second half um, to to make it happen. Those two quarterbacks, uh, we we saw a little bit of the second string guy uh, for the Roughnecks, uh, Cole McDonald. Um, not necessarily a passing guy, 
uh, but he will be a running quarterback for them. And, and that's kind of fun to see a pure passer in Silvers, their, their starting quarterback, then switch it up a little bit to kind of a, a, a run first guy. Um, I think this is the best quarterback uh, grouping or the best quarterback performance rather that we saw this weekend. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, I like that Wade Phillips intimidated the officials. What happened? Well, when they didn't get that first call and he challenged it and he yelled right at that guy, that is a penalty. And then on the very next play, it was even less of a hold slash grab and they threw that flag faster than anyone has ever thrown a flag. Shout out to the refs for making that makeup call. That was big makeup call. That was smart. Yeah. You you'd hate to have weight on your ass all year. It was a real Dan Blandino moment. He Dan Blandino the hell out of it. <laughs> uh, funniest storyline from this game. They had to stay at the same hotel. Oh, yes. So um, practiced together all week, ate lunch together all week while practicing, uh, staying together, rooming together. Um the the coaches at the end of the game said, "Hey, see you at the place. You know, they see you back at the hotel, Wade. That's all right, fun. all right, Bob. We'll see you there. <laughs> That's very fun. They towards the end of that game, they got very chippy. These were two teams that wanted to win, and I like that. Yeah, they were they were getting after each other a little bit. I will say, I don't like Brandon Silvers, but he didn't play bad, so I'm not going to say anything bad about him. He he looks like a frat boy." Um, that's what you said. He looks like a cheese ball. And I said, he looks like dumber Andrew Luck. Hey, don't misquote me. I said, cheese dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would hate to get that one wrong. <laughs> but, uh, again, I just really liked, uh, the different styles of quarterbacks, uh, and, and the play calling related to who they have at quarterback was very solid. I thought. So. I was going to say anything mean, but it looks like when he's sitting there and the camera's on him, he's like, Trying to remember to breathe. Maybe. He's like a big open mouth inhale guy. <laughs> Can't close his mouth. He just sits there and he's like, he looks dumbfounded. Mm. But he he doesn't. Constant resting confused face. Hey. Gets him a dub. Now, here's another question. Do you think that the Roughnecks have the best defense because their players are maybe the best or because Wade Phillips can coach a defense like mm. super well. I think your assessment of Wade Phillips and the coaching staff is accurate. I just think they're the best coached. Uh, I don't necessarily think they have the best players. I think arguably you could say the dragons have a really solid uh, cohesive unit on all three phases of the ball. Um, but uh, just the, I don't think you can say enough about how well uh, Wade Phillips is playing in this or coaching in this uh, league so far. Who was the Dragons cornerback that was playing? Uh, oh, whose dad passed away? Yeah. I can't remember his name, but. Shouts out to him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big football guy move, and he had good football plays. That's yep. good heart. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Wade Phillips is nasty. The Roughnecks defense is nasty. First play of the game, interception. Boom. That's what I'd like to see. And then they also talked about, um, on the kickoff, they said, we set the tone. We go on defense first. Mm. That's a Wade Phillips thing from start to finish. Yeah. So, I, if I were a betting man in the state of Washington, would allow for it. I'd put a little sprinkling on the Roughnecks here. They, they're a team... That will, I'll say it now, they'll be in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Uh, Did we say one nice thing about the Renegades? Yeah, let's go to the Renegades. We haven't really, um, I didn't know who Drew Plitt was. I still don't. Don't care. <laughs> um, his last name sounds like the noise Rain makes. Expert analysis. Um. I like Bob Stoops, too. Yeah, sure. I think this is a pretty decent team. Um, they didn't do anything particularly excellent consistently, but 
I think they have some pieces that can make things go. Uh, overall, uh, here's here I got one. Uh, what's this guy's name? Sal Canella. Mm-hmm. He had a good week last week, and he's a consistent receiver for them. So I think going forward, they should throw him the ball as much as possible. Yeah, so he did a halftime uh, interview, and uh, him and Nate Becker – um who is a tight end for the renegades uh both played at green bay so uh, they have a little bit of a brotherhood there and and uh i I think that's cool to see a a receiving group that's already kind of meshed and and uh showing each other some love so yeah i don't think they're a bad team for sure i I just think the roughnecks are that good and and they're going to be scary uh for the entirety of the season that's out we feel it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So Arlington. There's a Bob Stoops joke here somewhere. Uh, the Arlington. Uh, <laughs> Oklahoma Sooners. That's not it. Uh, uh, the Arlington. Uh, live grenades. No, wait. We're, we're the Renegades. Uh, 14. Uh, the Houston Wade Phillips. 23. Beautiful. Uh, we also got a joke submission, which we will throw right. out there at the end of the, or we can do it now if you would like. Transition period. We're going to move from XFL into NBA. Let's do a joke. Okay. Mid-cast joke. Um, you want to lay it on us, Cody? You could do it. Okay. This was submitted by our good friend, friend of the pod, uh, Mr. B Dusty 24 Um <laughs> Big joke, big presence in the online community. Oh, huge. He's got a big online following. Um, here's the joke. Uh, did you hear about the mind controlled air freshener? I haven't. Well, it makes sense if you think about it. Mm. <laughs> I, I wanted that to bang so much harder than it did. So your lighter joke. Oh, yeah, okay. Here's another submission from yours truly. Uh, This is submitted by the doctor. Um, Everybody, please please, uh, (laughs) drop how good of a joke this is in the chat. Um, What weighs more, a pound of water or a pound of butane? Well, they weigh the same. I don't know. It's butane because it's a lighter fluid. (laughs) I didn't want to touch that, but... It's a lighter fluid, guys. I told that joke to my mom today. And she she loved it. She was a terrible. Oh, no. Come on. Connie, you're a saint. And um, and then everyone around the table took turns dissecting it. No. No, they didn't. I swear to you. You are botching um, the joke then. But you know what? Fine. We'll try again next week. Submit your favorite joke in the comments, please. If you're lucky, we'll read it. Have a good laugh about it. Even if you're not lucky, we might still read it. We'll still read it no matter what. But it makes me laugh. I'm going to say it as if it were my own. Beautiful. Also, during the transition period, I got some inside information that some other podcast said that he would be king of jail. I've been saying that forever. There is no way. And, And whoever this is, if this finds him... Meet me in the backyard. We'll put on some gloves and we'll do like a fundraiser for um what what would, it, what would be a funny one? Like um like a a fundraiser to build like halfway homes. And okay. I'll just kill you in the backyard and then I'll be king of jail. I feel like you want to be king of jail because of how much soap is being dropped. No. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> I don't drop the soap. You might like it if other people do. That's that's an absurd statement. I would be king of jail. And you know what? Actually, you know what? I'm going to up it. Yeah. As it was pointed out to me, jail is soft. I would be king of federal prison. <laughs> okay. That's where I draw my line. I'm king of federal prison. Oh, no. I'm a man of the people. I would get it done. How about this? You're going to lock me in solitary? My mind is gone. 
you can't take away what I never had. Try really hard not to wear a ponytail when you're in federal prison. All right. They don't let me have my hair, I thought. Oh, they'll let you have your hair with how pretty you look. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Very nice of you to say that. Oh, yeah. No problem. All right. NBA talk. Let's make it happen, Captain. Two takeaways from the weekend of basketball. Maybe the highest scoring basketball game I have ever seen. Oh, insanity. And um, LeBron is never going to lose again. Okay. Because he said it was the 23 most important games he's going to play in his career coming. So Beautiful. The, what was it? The Clippers? No, Clippers are playing Kings? today. It was... No, who would the Kings hook a million points on? Uh, I, it was the Kings and... I thought it was the Clippers. It might have been it the was... Yep, Kings and Clippers. Yeah. 160 or 176 to 175 double overtime regulation ended 136 apiece. Um, Kings were just playing lights out. Uh, you know, I, I think people at the beginning of the season just kind of discounted this team. However, um, the Kings have been young for a long time, and, and they're finally starting to come together as, as a team that's uh, somebody to be scared of. So, And my favorite part of this was De'Aaron Fox being asked, are you, are you like, concerned or scared of, like, these other great point guards on the other teams? And he basically said, I don't give a fuck. They should be scared of me. I love that. And I was like, yeah, you know what? De'Aaron Fox has been in the league a long-ass time. And he's always been a good enough player. And now that the Kings actually have, like, other good enough players around him, they're – I'll say this. I like the NBA when the Kings suck because at least I know I can just go and be like, oh, they're terrible. Now that they're good, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Shouts out to the Kings. Yeah. Uh, an electric game with a lot of scoring. I don't think people have been this excited since Chris Webber and Mike Bibby. Hmm. Okay. That, that, makes, right. that makes sense. Those are the... Uh, and maybe Peja Stoyakovic. Oh, yeah. Hit the Peja. He was on NBA Live 08, maybe 06. Best three-point shooter I'd ever seen. I thought he actually was like a god. He couldn't miss. It was awesome. So, that's how... Asia. And then uh, we're also going to do our finals predictions. What was the second thing you said, though? You said high scoring game and. And LeBron never losing. Oh, again. LeBron. Le yeah. Um, the script's been written, it, yeah. it's been decided. Uh, LeBron is going to continue to win. They're going to find a way to get that team into the playoffs. They're like a game out of the play in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in the Pelicans or the Timberwolves. So let's hope for the best on that, okay? Boy, do I hate the Lakers, though. Who doesn't? I don't know, but uh, LeBron did fake hurt himself today as well. We already talked about that, but he definitely fake hurt himself. He popped and flopped. Who did the song Pop, Lock, and Drop It? Oh, uh, Huey. Yeah. Shouts out to <laughs> Huey. Wherever you're at, man. Get us a, get us a song. A, a uh, Sunday Scaries Cottonwood Media song, please. That would be sick. Come back for Huey. He had bangers. Don't, don't get it twisted, all right? So, as I'm looking at this, I think it's pretty clear to me the finals are going to be I want to pick the Kings so bad because nobody's going to do it but the Kings give up 182 points a game. You will never in the playoffs win. So I am going to dark horse it. Actually, you know what? The Suns is not a dark horse pick. They might be favored. Scratch that. <laughs> The West has a lot of good teams. If the Denver Nuggets don't make the championship, there will be hell to pay. Mm. 
Jokic is going to win his third MVP, and he will be the guy that loses in the second round every year. So I'm picking the Denver Nuggets from the West, and they're going to play mm, what I would assume is going to be the Milwaukee Bucks. Good choice. I also remember the other thing I was going to say. What was that? I saw on Twitter Jason Tatum hit that um, game-winning three mm-hmm. with like three seconds left or whatever. And everyone was like, you said Jason Tatum wasn't clutch. He's this. Jason Tatum is the most unclutch player of all time. He is such a loser. When you need to win in a game that matters, do not count on him. This is your warning. Do not count on him. And then Embiid hit that full quarter, but it was too late. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. You guys beat the 76ers in a game that was quasi-important, sort of. A little rivalry. I don't know. I don't care. Jason Tatum, he doesn't have the winning factor. He doesn't have it. You've never been a Tatum guy. No. Um, he's a great player, but he's like, for every person that's like, oh, well, Westbrook's just a stat stuffer. What do you think he is? Tatum? Yes. Um, a very solid younger guy, I would say. He likes getting his points. He likes being the hero of games that doesn't matter. Sure. He's a great player, not a winner. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm going to agree with you uh, for the East. I think the Bucks have what it takes. Right now in the NBA season is a time to really cement yourself in, uh, and I think the Bucks are doing exactly that. Uh, Ante DiCumpo is just, you know, it, what are you going to do against him? He got a little wrist injury. Oh, is he not playing? Yeah, I mean, he's fine. Okay. He's just a little, I think it's just a jammed wrist or a sprained wrist or something, but. He'll be back. So I think the East, the Bucks, is a pretty safe uh, bet for the finals. Um, ever since the Sonics left Seattle, I have been a Suns guy. Um, I just really like Booker. I, I just think he's one of the best players out right now. Big loser, too. Um, I want to say the Suns in the West for the finals. However, um, I have also been impressed with the Kings and how they've been kind of staying in it uh, and, and showing a lot of promise throughout the years. So I might say Kings. I might say Kings and Bucks in the finals. If I had to pick a dark horse in the East, I would pick the Cavs. Sure. I like them. That's a good pick. All right. The highest scoring team in the NBA, the Kings, versus one of the best defensive teams in the league. Yeah. The Bucks. All right. I like your pick. I like my pick. We both like the Bucks, though. I would pick the Bucks to probably win the championship this year. But we'll see what happens when the time comes for full NBA playoff breakdown. Yeah, I think NBA playoff will be fun to cover. Can't wait. I like the NBA playoffs a lot. Um, quick flip. Baseball talk. Pitch count. Clock count, batter count. What do you clock time? Clock Clock, time. Clock time. (laughs) Yeah, clock time. Clock time, baby. How do you feel about this new rule and how it's been fleshing out over the weekend? Crazy that in the first opportunity for it to be a huge problem, it was. You are in the ninth inning, high pressure situation because you know the bases were loaded, and. The pitcher and batter were both mulling around, and then the batter got in, and then the umpire um, struck him out without a pitch ever being thrown. So, good rule. I don't like the rule. Uh, I don't like a game to end on that new rule. Um, But, you know, uh, a lot of the homies have said it. It's just this is what we have to adjust to now uh, as players, as fans. Um, the game's going quick, as I think it'll be really interesting in a live setting. Who cares? Do you go to a baseball game hoping that you can leave in two hours? I go to a baseball game feeling confident that I could get up out of my seat uh, in the middle of an inning and still come back to my seat with that inning still happening. 
Yeah. Go get a hot dog and then, you know, whatever. Get a little pretzel. Yeah. Get them Mariner garlic fries. But now we might see it where you get up and then a whole side is retired. I know. I'm, whatever. The rule is the rule. But also, I think they have, hmm, how do you, how do I phrase this? The analytics have shown that the shift was very effective. So every team started shifting for certain batters. I think that's not necessarily in the spirit of baseball, but it is a numbers advantage. So I guess I can live with that, but you take away the shift um, from the infield. But I saw this crazy diagram that suggested you could still put a shift on with the outfielders or depending on the batter, you take your left or right fielder and jam them at either second shortstop on the grass or second second base. And then you leave right field or left field basically open. <laughs> that would take probably one or two hits before you never did it again. But for a guy that can't hit that way, good luck. But also, they used to put the shift on Ortiz and he would bunt down the third base line. So learn to bunt again. I don't know. You can beat the shift. They're asking you to beat it. They're telling you where to hit the ball. So the shift, fine, get rid of it, whatever. But I, the spirit of baseball is this, this batter versus this pitcher, this one-on-one -on -one duel they're having. And sometimes it's intense, and you got to take your time a little bit. No one's asking you to take two minutes per pitch, but, I mean, come on. And with this new rule, the, the pickoff problem, mm -hmm. this, I think, is a real problem. If you know a guy is likely to steal and you can't hold him to that base, let's say you have a guy, <clears throat> prime steal situation. He goes, gets his lead, you pick him off. Throw, throw to first. He gets back. You cannot throw back to first. You cannot. You get two attempts at a pickoff, and then you can't do it anymore. But if you throw that second pickoff attempt and do not get him, he could literally just walk to second base and you can do nothing. He could take a 15, 20 foot lead. What are you supposed to do? It's an interesting aspect now that they're going to have to adjust to. Um, I mean, you kind of made a little bit of a mention just a bit ago. Uh, the MLB seems to be what phasing out bunts and phasing in multiple stolen bases a game. They just want the game to be faster and more exciting. Mm. But the excitement from baseball comes from knowing the game. Mm -hmm. The excitement of baseball comes from the little plays. A sacrifice bunt is just as exciting as, you know, a little looper to the outfield. Mm. Home run is king excitement, which is weird that they ban steroids. Uh well, okay, banned yeah, steroids. Sure. We'll, we'll, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I mean, the MLB also got caught switching the balls last season. Mm. So the MLB doesn't actually care about their product, I've decided. They just want to figure out a way to maximize viewers for yeah. money. And I understand that. You're a professional league. You have to make your money. I hate this pitch clock bullshit. I hate it. I never once stood there. And when you go to pick off one too many times as the crowd, now it's your job. It's your job to hold that opposing pitcher accountable. It's your job to make him nervous. You boo and yell at him, and you get a yell, play the game. You get a boo him until he is uncomfortable. And then now, now the batter knows you're behind them. And now you get a little juice going in the stadium. Baseball is a game of, of feel and excitement. And when you start taking away different things like that, I, I it's irritating to me. And I don't even love baseball that much. I like watching it. I like going to the stadiums. I like the atmosphere. But I don't care how fast you make the game. I'm not necessarily going to sit down and watch a random baseball game on TV. Watch a lot of Mariner games because I like the Mariners.
but I'm not going to be like, oh man, did you see that the Cardinals were playing the Blue Jays? I don't care. I really don't. Freaking July. Why do I care? So it's February. Well, I mean, in July they might play. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, well, think I care about spring training? I know you do. You so, care a lot. I guess we see, right? Wait and see. Yeah, spring training is a, a good opportunity to get used to these new rules. We'll see how regular season pans out. Hoping for the best. Hopefully they just get it figured out and there's no noticeable issues in the regular season. But you better believe I'm going to be very mad if we just start getting guys sent to the dugout because they didn't set their feet in the box fast enough. That's absurd. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a rule change, make it to where batters and pitchers can't request time. Once you lock one foot in the box, you are in the box and the pitcher can come. Sure. I mean, whatever. I dare you to ruin baseball. See how mad people get. I think a lot of traditional baseball fans should not be happy with this, but I could be wrong. I could be in the minority here. I don't like the pitch clock. I, I don't think it's a, a great uh, situation. And then just the, the lack of shifting, too. We've just become accustomed to it. So, you know, you just got to get with the times, I guess. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how the rest of the, the season pans out. All right. Upcoming events. It is almost Selection Sunday. Almost Championship Week. So we're going to... We're going to do a whole episode breaking down some college teams that we like. And then continue with the XFL movement. We're your number one fans. So thanks, XFL, mm -hmm. for ignoring all of our requests <laughs> at all times. Unbelievable. Couldn't be me. Uh, what do you want? I want a lot, man. I want uh, I want a good job. I want <laughs> you're fired. I want a nice truck. <laughs> um, what are you, Nickelback? Yeah, <laughs> I, I am Nickelback personified. Um, fight night, UFC fight night was interesting because oh, the yeah, um, main card it was uh, Krillin Krylon. <laughs> Sounds like a Star Wars uh, alien race. Um, his team came out and said, yeah, our fighter's not going. He's sick. Uh, maybe he got spooked. Maybe he <laughs> didn't. Um, I didn't get any clarification on if Span, uh, won the match because of this. I didn't see if it was a forfeit or just like a complete cancellation. Um, but, um, you know, that, that was just kind of interesting, uh, another fight that happened today was boxing, and it was uh, everybody's favorite person to hate, Jake Paul, against uh, Tommy Fury. Uh, Fury looked in control from the first 10 seconds of the fight, and uh, I don't think it really surprised anybody that he took home the W. Um, I think it just confirms that Jake Paul's uh, time as a boxer uh, is over, and now he's just a, a YouTube celebrity boxer now did he reach his limit he found the limit of he can't beat low tier professional boxers yeah he can't be entry level boxing um i don't think uh i i was i will raise my hand and say you know i've been a big yeah. i think jake paul has what it takes guy put and, your hand way up uh, there you way go. up in the sky right. um and it was just because he wasn't fighting real boxers no so uh he lost <laughs> my favorite highlight was him losing a point for punching in the back of the head that's just yeah uh inexperience at that point of course it is um i don't think he did it on purpose i just think that's a, a boxing guy move to position yourself right in front of him and kind of lean in while he's throwing these little rabbit punches but yeah i i had fury winning it and he did so hmm. um you thought the scoring was a little bit interesting. One of those me. judges should be investigated immediately. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was as close as that particular judge. Was I, thing, I so. cannot imagine a world where two judges had it scored 47-43 and one guy was like, 
I don't think it was like 46, 44. That's for Paul. tough. Yeah. Like not even close to the other two. Investigate. I want an immediate investigation. Yep. Lock it in. But I mean, if that's the guy that's supposed to be like, well, it was always going to be a split because we might need the opportunity to do a second fight. I will say this. I am surprised he didn't get knocked out. Sure. So say something nice. He didn't get knocked out. And that's probably what he's going to ride. He's going to ride the fact that he didn't get knocked out by Fury and we need to do a rematch. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, I just think his his career as a boxer might be in danger or over. So, Yeah, I mean, what is he going to do? He'll call up some burnout, get him in there, and bump him and be like, see, I'm still good. It's like, well, I think the... You, you know the Wizard of Oz. The the curtain has been pulled aside, and now you can see maximum potential is beating up people that don't know how to fight. Yeah, just just a money fight, I guess. At that point, just let's just make some people some money and get it over with. But how much? I I would like to see the numbers on this. But now that he lost, how many people do you think are interested in paying to watch him fight again? Because the only reason people watched, I think, was hoping he would lose. Well, I did see um, on on the uh, Twitter side of things a lot of people saying Jake Paul with the dub, and that didn't happen. Well, that's so. the delusion that he's created. Yeah. He might be king of the internet. Paul Brothers in general, yeah. Unbelievable. They make garbage product, but they get everybody to be like, nice. How nice. about this? How about this now? I'll fight him. Okay, well, besides the match that we're going to set up between you and Jake Paul, uh, Paul Brothers Tag Team WWE. How's that sound to I, you? I hate that. <laughs> I, I just see that as a natural progression. That kind of pissed me off you said that, to be honest. <laughs> Fair enough, okay. Kind of it doesn't make me happy. I'm not saying I, I love that. I'm just saying... It seems like that could go that way. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited were you when Logan Paul and what's his nuts jumped from rope to rope and clotheslined each other? Was that really exciting or really lame? That was, Put it on the scale. That was a fun uh, acrobatic move that they both administered that was drawn up from the start. Um, they practiced that specific move a million times. So... so. I would never take away his athleticism. It's clear that that exists. So, fine. If he wants to go to the WWE, um, he has to fight, at a minimum, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar first. And then they both just get to kill him. Brock Lesnar will do, like, 95 suplexes, and then he's in. Think of the storylines, though. They have Paul Brothers as a tag team, then they can get in an infight. One of them goes to, you know, a, a, a different crew. Yeah, and, and their manager is Paul Heyman. Paul's great for the WWE. And they call him the PPP group. The COVID-19 relief fund group? Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. And, and when their, their tag team name is just the PP Brothers. <laughs> sure. They're... They're... they're their tag team finishing move is called the PP slap. You're having a lot of fun with PPs today, huh? <laughs> <Fuck> you. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. Other than the fights, uh, I, I didn't do a whole lot of other sports this weekend. So next know. weekend, okay, this is a spoiler. We're gonna do our first ever uh, on site. Frisbee golf review. We will be playing Frisbee golf. Disc golf? Disc golf. Okay. I don't want them to hate me before we start. We will do a round of disc golf with our coach. We have a disc golf coach now. It's the infamous B Dusty 24. No matter what he says, he's the coach. <laughs> um, you're pretty decent at it, though. I think I've just been playing a little bit longer than you have. Um, I don't know how to throw it correctly, so... 
I I hardly know. I get lucky when when I do throw. Last time we played, you took money off me. That's true. Yeah, but it did come down to the wire. It wasn't like it was me outside. We of... can play again. Sure. Let's. Right. I mean, uh, Cottonwood tries is is going to be a fun. It's going to be fun series. We're going to start with that, see how it goes, and then we're going to do the UFC fight, right? Yeah. John Bones Jones back. But that'll be something we'll definitely get a cover next week. That'll be fun, I think. I don't know shit about UFC, but I like him. Yeah. I like how much drugs he does. Fan favorite. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot coming up. XFL as usual, but yeah, um, college basketball, fights, disc golf. We're popping. General tomfoolery. As is tradition. It's going to be fun. The Padres paid Machado $350 million. I don't know where they found this money, but good for them. Yeah, after shelling out a bunch for Soto. He said he didn't know if he was going to play for him, so he just really grabbed and twisted and milked that money. All right. That was a closing thought. Um, submit your jokes. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on the Instagrams and the Twitters. You can find us Sunday Scaries 22 or maybe it's just Sunday Scaries. I don't know. I, I believe in all of you. I think you're all smart enough to find it. Uh, and then uh, stay tuned for more. We're going to the moon. If you get on now, you can tell everyone you were here first. Make it happen. There you go. Bye-bye.